Welcome back to the channel guys and thanks for subscribing. I'm in the RX-7 now but today we are not working on the RX-7, we're going to be working on a different type of vehicle. Look what showed up. This is Marcus's boat. Also soon to be the next artificial reef <laughs> in Sydney Harbour. All jokes aside, it's in for some 12 volt work. I won't be showing everything, but just need some new switches, um, some lights, and to sort out the wiring at the front uh, for the Minn Kota. I thought it'd be a good opportunity to show you how I'd adapt Anderson plugs to suit this setup. It's quite different to what I'm doing in my own boat, but really it's just basic 12 volt. So yeah, I hope you enjoy and you can find this a bit informative. This is the casting deck at the front of the boat. I've gone ahead and removed both the side panels just for better access. And this is the Minn Kota, which runs off a battery under this hatch. This is an AGM battery, I think it's 130 amp hours and it runs independent of the rear battery. This means that when the engine's on, uh, this battery is not getting any charge and after every use this will need to be recharged. Not usually a problem, but it's a bit of a hassle climbing into the boat every time and plugging the clips onto the terminals. So what we've decided to do is to add a flush mounted Anderson plug right here. And this is a separate circuit directly to this battery. While we're here, we're going to be putting a few circuit breakers in and also running an isolator for the Minn Kota. This is everything we should need. We've got battery terminals just to make things easier to disconnect. Two circuit breakers uh, for 50 amps, a battery isolator for the Minn Kota, and most importantly the Flushman Anderson plug, and I think I'm going to put it right there. We're going to be using 8 BNS cable. This is uh, left over from my own car, rated for 100 amps, uh, which is not a problem because my circuit breaker is 50 amps. While I've got this panel out of the boat, I'm going to show you how I wire my Anderson plugs and I'll also pre-wire this voltmeter. So this is uh, a grey 50 amp Anderson plug. They come in different shapes and sizes, uh, different colours, but essentially they're all the same. So you've got a positive side and a negative side and as long as you wire these in correctly, you can never um, mismatch the polarities. All you have to do is pay attention to the positive and the negative and you should be sweet. So to get these little crimping terminals out, all I need is a, a little screwdriver and I'm going to pop it out. And that's what you're left with. So I've chosen the 8 BNS. You can go up to a 6 BNS the 50 amp plugs um, but really depends on what you need uh, to power and, and what kind of amp rating you need. To prepare the cable we've got to use a knife to cut the insulation off the wire. Don't forget the heat shrink. I always forget the heat shrink. So this cable is now ready to go. But before we go ahead and crimp it, we must pay attention to the orientation um, to which this slides into the plug. You can see on this terminal there's a little hump, 
and the Anison plug contacts actually sit under this hump. And I'll just quickly show you, I'm not sure if you can see here, but you've got those two contacts there. The hump needs to sit on top of that contact. So I'm going to set the Anderson plug flat side down. Uh, positive is on the right side, so I'll flip the cable and the orientation of my terminal, uh, the hump sits on the top side like that. And same goes to the negative side, the hump sits on top. Let's do one at a time. So there's lots of different tools you can crimp with. Uh, this is my personal favorite, $30 crimping tool from Bunnings. I've also got a heavy duty one, but because we're only playing with eight gauge, we won't need that. Terminal's crimped. Um, as long as it passes the pull test, there's no reason why you can't use any other method. Um, I'll slide the heat shrink on. And heat gun. I don't like to use lighters because they, they tend to burn the, the heat shrink. So this is ready to go in. I'll grab my Anderson plug, got the positive going to the red and the negative going to the black. Sliding it in and just pushing it in place. And you hear two clicks and that's what it looks like from the other side. So I've gone ahead and put the Anderson plug back into the mount. It's looking great. Um, and now I'm going to wire up the voltmeter. If I wanted to run the voltmeter off this plug, um, I could definitely tap into the Anderson plug itself. But since I only want this gauge to turn on when the mincoder is on, I'm going to wire this back uh, to the isolator. So now we have the battery secure, we're going to start off with the Mincoder circuit. So from this positive terminal, we're going to go to this circuit breaker, through the isolator into, and into an Anderson plug to the Mincoder. So that's the front panel back in. I've still got good access to the cabling. So this red cable is going straight to the circuit breaker here and then onto this terminal. And my negative is just going to go straight to the battery.
Now you're all dying to see it. So I thought I'd give you a tour of the front battery setup. So under this hatch, we've got the battery. We've got two circuits. The first circuit supplies power to the circuit breaker and then to the isolator. So this is for the Minn Kota. We'll switch it on. And it'll also switch on the voltmeter. So while you're fishing along, you have a good idea of the battery capacity given the, the voltage on the gauge. The second circuit uh, runs directly to this Anderson plug. So this Anderson plug is always live, but it is protected by a 50 amp circuit breaker. Now we have the Anderson plug installed. Literally any 12 volt source uh, can plug straight into this. If you're at home, you can run this off a 240 volt battery charger. If you're on the road, uh, you can run it off the dual battery setup in the car. Or if you're camping, you can run it to any solar blanket or a solar panel. Even though we are using this as a charging circuit, we can also use this to supply uh, power to small appliances. You could probably run a small fridge, you can run lights, uh, you, could, you might even run a small inverter. So I've got all the wiring sorted on the boat now. We've got the steady gunner lights, uh, the steady spotlight at the front, uh, the navigation lights, the bilge pump, and also the live bait tank. That's it for the video guys. Thanks for watching. A bit of a different video from last time, uh, but those who know me know I love my 12 volt. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Leave us a like and a comment below. Actually, from the previous video, the feedback I received was very helpful. Uh, so I encourage you guys just to let me know what you think of the content, uh, what you think of the video, what works, what doesn't. Uh, just slide in my DMs. As you can tell, I can't manage daily videos. It was actually a joke, uh, but I can promise you we have some very exciting content coming up for the RX7. So yeah, stay tuned and I'll see you guys soon.